So you're refusing to get into what allegations the BJP is leveling here, that you know this is an attempt to protect one community, etc. If, if I was to descend to the level of answering BJP allegations, I couldn't do my job. You may consider it fit to, for your time. It's not fit for my time. Black and white is not fit for my time. Why is that, though? Do you not take the BJP seriously? I, I don't take rabble-rousers seriously. I don't take instigators seriously. I take reasonable human beings seriously. I don't consider the individual you mentioned as one of them. So I don't answer any of his questions. There is an argument, however, that the BJP, Mr. Anna Malay, uh, they're spreading their wings in the state of Tamil Nadu. Do you believe that to be a reality? No, because time will tell. I don't believe it. They may say whatever they want. Time will tell. As far as the South is concerned, South India, we had a bipole in Telangana recently where the Congress was pushed essentially to third place. The BJP is well, coming to second place. Why am I to comment place. about Telangana? So the question... No, no. You ask me about Tamil Nadu. I am not in the business of commenting okay. about other states or other elections. Right? Fair enough. Sticking yeah. to Tamil Nadu, yeah. another aspect, another issue uh, that I wanted to bring up with you, uh, Mr. Tyagarajan, is about comments that have been made recently by members of the DMK, uh, like Mr. Raja. Uh, and this became, of course, a huge national talking point when he said that if you're a Hindu, you're a Shudra. And this has led to questions about whether the DMK is anti-Hindu. What do you have to say about that? I can't speak for others. I am a practicing Hindu. I, my forefathers, have done more for the temples and the people who practice Hinduism in Tamil Nadu than almost anybody I know and certainly anybody in the BJP. If I am successful in the DMK and I get such great responsibility in such little time of being in public life, how is it possible that the DMK is an anti-Hindu party? Right? Hmm. So I'm not going to get into that. But the comment, did it hurt your sentiments? As a I don't even remember what the comment was. I'm not in the business of following other people's comments and responding to them. If it's policy, if it's related to the government, if it's related to finance, you ask me. But it is related and to your party, sir. The party is the party. The government is the government. I'm, not, I'm, I'm nobody in the party. I'm not even an office bearer in the party. I'm a member in the party. I'm not a party spokesperson. But doesn't it concern you being a no, member no, no, of the party? No, no, no. That I, comments I, like this I, I mean, I, and not by, you know, no, no, someone I am, who's in I the am a member, member of the of party parliament. and I am a minister in the government. You ask me anything about the government, it's my job to answer because I am a minister in the government. You ask me about the party, I am not qualified to answer. I am not even an office bearer in the party. I don't even have the lowest office. I'm simply a member of the party. Okay. The party will answer for the party. I answer for the government based on the portfolios that I hold. Let me ask you then, as a practicing Hindu, does it hurt your sentiment? I don't worry. My faith is very deep. I don't worry what anybody else says, whether they're BJP or the ADMK or the AM, DMK or the uh, Congress. My faith is so deeply rooted in me that it's not affected by the comments of anybody else. I don't need anybody else to wish me. I don't care what anybody else says against me. My faith is part of who I am. It's a relationship between me and the, the Almighty. And I don't really pay attention to what anybody else says about it. Okay. Uh, the recently, uh, in fact just yesterday, you had the Supreme Court taking up the issue of the EWS quota. And your party, the DMK, has taken a very, very clear stand on it. You had Mr. Stalin put out a statement yesterday where he said that we've taken... Uh, a set, it's been a setback, really, in the fight for social justice. Why is it that the DMK believes that a pro-poor quota that's over and above your caste quota is something that affects social justice? Again, I am only a member of the party. I am not an office bearer. I simply don't have the standing or the mandate to second guess or issue statements after the leader of the party has issued a statement. Hmm. I'll give you a personal opinion if you want. Sure. At a personal opinion, I worry that this judgment contradicts previous judgments of the Supreme Court in two clear ways. The first way, previous judgments have said that you cannot have reservation on the basis of economic conditions alone. Hmm. This contradicts that. The second is that the total quota of reservations should not exceed a certain percentage. Yeah. This contradicts that. So I say as a citizen, as an administrator, as I have said in multiple uh, contexts on multiple occasions, the great trouble we have as administrators is that we are seeing Supreme Court judgments that are contradictory to each other. And so we, you know, I'm sitting on the GST Council, mm. right? In the GST Council, we have a group of ministers yeah. on how to apply GST to casinos, horse racing, and um, online gaming. 
the whole committee is frozen, the GOM is frozen, because there are like 20 cases from 1960s to this March, where the definition of what is considered a game of skill and game of chance and whether horse racing falls into A or B, there are conflicting opinions coming out of Supreme Court judgments. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you have Supreme Court judgments that are contradictory to each other, hmm. now you find it difficult to administer a government because you don't know which one to follow at what time, right? Case in point, of course, a much less consequential issue hmm. on uh, how to tax horse racing. Is it a game of skill or game of chance? How to tax online drumming? Is it a game of skill or game of chance? But this same principle applies here also. In fact, I just was in Chennai. I'll give you the context. Sure. I was invited to a book by a former judge of the Madras High Court, the Justice A.K. Rajan. And one of the other guests of honor was a retired Supreme Court judge. Hmm. And the title of the book is, The Constitution is Not What It Is. The Constitution of India is Not What It Is. And it's a riff off of a statement made by a very senior judge in the U.S., who at one point I said, the Constitution of the United States is not what it is, it is what we say it is. Basically, that's the job of the judges to interpret, interpret the Constitution. Sure. That is the weighty responsibility that lies on the shoulders of the judiciary. Now, if the judiciary doesn't follow precedent, and then I cited an example, actually. Mm. I cited an actual instance. I used to live in the U.S., as you may know. In the Jersey City Courthouse, which is then one of the eminent buildings, there is an inscription, stone inscription. Mm. And it says, precedent makes law. If you stand well, stand still. Right? Always check for the precedent before you make a decision and be very reluctant to overstep or upturn it because you have now created a new law. That's basically the implication of that. Mm. Precedent makes law. If you stand well, stand still. Be very reluctant to go against precedent because you're upsetting a lot of other things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That doesn't seem to be happening today. Right? I'm saying all the way from horse racing and online rummy to reservations.